In this course we'll see how to create a water simulation like this. This involves many steps. First of all, we'll see how to create a realistic animation of the boat. Then, we'll animate the sail and ropes with the cloth simulation. In the second part of the course, we'll see how to create the water simulation. As a first step, we'll create the water and domain objects. We'll see how to set all the main properties and attributes of the fluid simulation. Then we'll move on to the simulation of the collision of the boat with the water. We'll also add some splashes, foam and spray. Finally, we'll create a realistic material for the water. At the end of the course, you will learn how to manage a complete liquid simulation in Blender and how to solve some of the most important problems that we have to deal with such kind of simulations. The course assumes a basic knowledge of Blender, at least in relation to the viewport navigation, and the basic concepts of object manipulation. However, you'll find all the source files of each step, so that you can easily follow the entire course, even without reproducing yourself every single part. So, let's get started. The first step is to create the basic scene setup. First of all, we have to add the model of the boat. I downloaded it from Sketchfab, and you can find the link in the description if you want to use the same model. A fast way to import a model from Sketchfab is by using the related plugin in Blender. Simply write the name of the model, and then import. Now we have to scale it in order to have a real size. This is very important, as the simulations are impacted by the scale of the objects involved. The same simulation may have big differences, due to the global scale. So, let's select the main part of the boat to see the actual size. Then, select the parent empty of the boat, and scale it until you reach a boat length of about 8 or 10 meters. Now we have to define the location and the size of the object that will contain the simulation of the water. This is one of the most important aspect we have to precisely define before starting any simulation. So, let's take a closer look at this. When we create a fluid or smoke simulation, we have to define the space where the simulation will take place. This because the simulation can't be spread on the entire virtual world. This would take an infinite time to be computed. The smaller the volume, the faster the simulation will be completed. So, we have to define a good balance between the size of the simulation and the real space we need to have a good animation. Let's add a cube and scale it in order to fill the space where we want the water around the boat. Then, add a camera and define your main shot. This is the second main aspect we have to consider. Basically, we have to frame the scene in order to have a good close-up of the boat. The perspective is also important. For example, if we frame the scene in this way, the border of the water will be clearly visible. And, as told before, we can't extend too much the simulation size. For such a situation, we'll try to find a solution by adding a water object in the background. But for now, let's rotate and move the camera, in order to see only a small portion of the water. Now we have to animate the boat and the camera, keeping in mind the same restrictions we just saw. First of all, let's animate the boat along the y-axis. It's better to have a slow movement, something like this. Also, set the keyframe interpolation to linear. This because we don't want the boat to gradually increase or decrease the velocity. Then, let's animate the camera. You can do that as you prefer, but remember to frame the view in order to see the border of the water as little as possible. Now we have to add some pitching to the boat. You could do that by manually animating its rotation. 
But there is a better way to do that. Select the empty object of the ship and, in the Object Properties tab, switch to the XYZ Euler Rotation mode. Then, add a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. Basically, we want to add an automatic rotation to the ship, along the X and Y axis. This can be done in the graph editor. Select the X rotation axis. And, in the modifiers tab on the right, add a built-in function. Then, select the sine function. This basically creates an infinite repetition in the rotation, along the selected axis. Of course, the rotation is too fast and strong. Now we have to set the parameters. In order to have a proper rotation, for example, 0.06 .06 for the amplitude, 0.1 for the phase multiple, and 5.3 for the phase offset. But the movement is too regular, and we should add a bit of noise. We can do that by adding another function, the noise one. As blend type, choose add. In this way, the noise function is added to the previous one. These are the values I set. As you can see, the sine function is now a bit noisier, and the resulting rotation less regular. We can do the same for the pitching along the y-axis. You can copy these functions from the x-axis and copy them to the y-axis. Then, adjust the parameters, in order to have a realistic pitching of the ship. It is important to have the right movement of the ship, and then proceed with the simulation. Before starting the simulation, we want to add some more realism to it. We want the sail to move and stretch as a real cloth. We can do that with the cloth simulation. So, select the sail, and, in the Physics Properties tab, click on the Cloth button. If you start the simulation, the sail falls down. This because it becomes an active object, and is subject to forces such as gravity, and so on. First of all, we have to pin the sail to the boat mast. We can do that by selecting the vertices that don't have to move. Switch to the Edit Mode. Activate the toggle X-ray button, and select the vertices at the top and bottom of the sail. The X-ray button ensures that you select the vertices, both on the front and back side of the sail. Then, assign these vertices to a new vertex group. Now, go back to the cloth modifier, and, in the shape tab. Select the group you just created in the pin group attribute. The sail now moves as it should. Finally, in the Object Collision tab, activate the Self Collisions property. In this way, the sail also detects the internal collisions. We can leave all the other properties as they are. Finally, we have to apply the same simulation to the ropes of the sail. Select the object and, as done before, activate the X-ray button and select all the vertices where the ropes have to be pinned to. Assign the vertices to a new group. Then, activate the cloth simulation, and select the vertices for the pin group. However, it seems that the ropes have a strange movement. If you deactivate the internal collisions, the simulation looks better. We are almost done. The last step is to add a wind force so that the sail continues to wave. So, add a wind force and rotate it in order to be aligned with the y axis. 
increase the strength of the wind until you reach the result that you want. This value strictly depends on the size of your scene or other factors. You can also increase the wind noise. As a last step, we have to move the wind inside a new collection. In fact, a field force, such as the wind in our case, will impact any other simulation that we'll add to our scene. So, this wind will also influence the water that we'll add later. But we want to separately control each part of our simulation. And we can do that by grouping the forces in different collections. Now, open the Field Weights tab of the Cloth Simulation and choose the collection you just created. Do the same for the ropes. I also suggest to bake the simulation to disk. When we have a global simulation with multiple objects and types of simulation, as in our case, it is important to bake the single components. This speeds up the calculation and ensures greater consistency. Before baking, you have to save your blend file to disk. Then, open the cache tab and select disk cache. Finally, bake the simulation. If you want to change some parameter, you have to delete the cache file and then bake again. Now we finally have our moving boat, and we can move on to the water simulation. The first thing we have to do is to define the volume where the simulation will take place. And we already did that by creating the cube that represents the water. We have to transform this in the simulation domain. Select the cube and, in the Physics Properties tab, click on Fluid. This is where we'll define all the properties and parameters of our simulation. Before moving on, you have to know that a simulation is composed of three main objects that you can find in the Type menu. The first is the domain and represents the physical 3D space where the simulation will take place. As told at the beginning, the bigger this volume, the longer the simulation will take to be processed. The second object is the fluid itself, that can be a liquid or a smoke. The last option is the effector. This represents any object that we want to collide or influence the movement of the fluid. So, in the type menu, let's select the domain option. Then, select liquid as domain type. An important thing we have to do at this point is to apply the scale to this cube. In this way, the scale of the object is reset. This is really important, otherwise, the simulation can have some strange behavior. Remember to do that every time you change the scale of the domain. For example, Another thing we could do is to scale the height of the domain in order to have enough space below and above the boat. Remember that the simulation will take place only inside this volume. So, if we want some waves or splashes, we need some space above the water level. You can set the wireframe mode for the viewport display of the domain. Now we have to create the object that represents the liquid itself. Add a new cube and make it larger than the domain, along the x and y axis. Then, go to the right view, by pressing the number 1 or 3 on the numpad. Now we have to move this object, so that its upper side is placed where we want the water to be. Basically, something like this. Now, as done before, assign the fluid simulation to this object and select the flow option. In the flow type, select liquid. 
But before moving to the simulation, there is a last step we have to do. This is something we would normally have learned after a few simulation tests. But, for the sake of simplicity, let's do that right now. Basically, we have to set the starting point of the boat outside the domain. This may sound strange, but there is a reason for that. If we start the simulation with the boat inside the water, the liquid will also fill the boat. And that because, of course, Blender doesn't know that the water has not to be inside the boat. But, if the boat starts moving from outside the domain, and then collides with the fluid, the water will be automatically kept out of the boat. Now we can start considering the water simulation itself. So we already have a domain and a liquid object. You should also have some liquid particles. In order to see them, you have to set the viewport visibility of the domain as wireframe. You also have to hide the water object. This because the water object is only used to define the liquid source properties, but the liquid itself is created in the domain object. Before moving on, let's take a closer look at how a liquid simulation is composed. The basic components of the simulation are these liquid particles. Each particle is a single object with physics properties, such as size, velocity, etc. In this way, Blender can compute the motion and the collisions of each particle. But the particles only represents the dynamic properties of the liquid. The next step is to create a mesh around the particles. So, the mesh will move and collide in the same way as the particles below. Finally, we also have other particle systems, such as foam, spry, and bubbles. We'll see each component later. But if you start the simulation, something strange happens. This because we created the wind force that also affects the liquid simulation. Basically, we have two ways to avoid this. First of all, we could disable, inside the simulation, the force we don't need. Select the domain and open the field weight tab. Here you can set the weight of each force of the scene. We can disable them all, or only the wind force. But if you play the simulation, nothing seems to have changed. This is a common situation you often will have to deal with. When we change a parameter, we have to reset the simulation, otherwise Blender will play the same animation as before. The fastest way to do that is to temporarily change the resolution division property. We'll see this property later. Basically, this forces Blender to compute the simulation over again. So remember, every time you change a parameter, change the resolution division property, and then play the animation. Now the liquid is perfectly flat. But in this way, we couldn't have any wind force affecting the liquid. So the best way to do that is as we did for the cloth simulation. We simply create a new collection and set this as the effector collection for this simulation. Since the collection is empty, there is not any force that acts on the simulation but we are still able to add any force we want to that collection, as we will do later.